Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm going to read to you this letter from Dawn. It's only got a couple of entries, and then she didn't have other people that submitted things, so she included a chapter out of scriptures from Jude. So I think it's definitely worth sharing. All right, the very first part is The Trumpet by Bill Burns. Here's what he received. Come up to the mountain of the Lord's house. Come and sit with me. Talk with me and let me show you the things that are before you. Does that not sound like the bride going outside of time to Mount Zion? Be with the Lord for our instructions. That's what I was getting out of it, okay? He, he goes on. I will empower you to overcome anything and everything that the enemy brings against you. You are indeed more than a conqueror. See, we're supposed to be that already, right? If you have the faith. And you know spiritual warfare that you can rebuke the dem the devil, his demons, evil spirits, command them to flee in Jesus' name, they must go. It goes on to say, exercise the authority I have given you and become that person I have designed you to be. So this is for us now as well as could be for us soon okay and that's all that's there he didn't put a scripture with it all right let me pull this down the next one is small straws there we go by marcia burns refused boy did i need to hear this one today brothers and sisters yes i did Refuse to feel sorry for yourself or lose hope. Rise up in the strength of my purpose for you. Do not underestimate the power of your will to go as hard as you can for as long as you can to accomplish what I have set before you. You are not alone. I am with you to gain the victory. But sometimes I feel really, really alone. And wish I just had one person in my life that was physically touchable, huggable. You know what I mean? That could sit down and that we can talk like I talk to you. And they have like-minded I, I get that with Grafted in Team Jesus nearly every night, but it's online. And even though we say big hugs, bye for now, big hugs, when, you know, like when I get off, it's just not, I can't feel it. You know what I mean? And sometimes I miss that, that human touch. And I don't want to go around hugging nobody here. Because <laughs> their immune systems are tanking by the day. Anyway. Um, it says, for as long as you can, keep doing what you can. For as long as you can to accomplish what I've set before you. You are not alone. I am with you to gain the victory. And with that is put the scriptures. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yep, I can do. That's the very first scripture my little grandson learned. He's 21 now. And I wonder how he's doing. I remember him handing me that little refrigerator magnet. He could barely talk. And it was scribbled all over. He'd made it in Sunday school. And it had Philippians 4.13. And the first thing he could say was Philippians 4.13. I mean, as far as the scripture goes. <laughs> now, the rest of this is, is Bible. If you'd like to get your Bibles and open them up, I do not know what version this is. So, you can just listen and then check your own version later. It's from Jude. I think there's only one chapter. 
contend for the faith. Jude 1.1 1, 1. Jude, bondman of Jesus. See, back in them days, instead of writing the letter out, and then at the end they put from Jude. They started out a lot of times with uh, the name who wrote it. But now I noticed a lot of Paul's letters will have some salutation at the end also. Moving on. Jude, bondman of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to the ones having been sanctified in God the Father and of Jesus Christ. I have heard that Jude and James were brothers, the brothers of Jesus. See, but he doesn't say it that way. He calls himself a bondman of Jesus Christ. He doesn't consider himself equal to be a brother of Jesus. But we are. Jesus told us. These who do the will of my father are my brothers and my sisters and my mother. Yep. So now Jude is included. Okay. To the ones having been sanctified in God the Father and of Jesus Christ, being kept, called ones. Verse 2. Mercy to you, and may peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, having all... The part of the word is cut off, but hopefully it's just one letter. Having all diligence to write to you concerning the common deliverance, I had necessity to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly in the belief once delivered up to the holy ones. I had to read that again. I had necessity to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly in the belief once delivered up to the Holy Ones. Let's check another version. I'm going to pull up Jude 1, 4. Yes, I, I can't. I can't do it right now. They want me to donate. I did one time. I was able to one time. I guess I use them all the time, you know. Jude one. I think we were on verse four. Let me double check. It's good to cross reference when you don't know the version. No, I'm sorry. It was three. Okay, we'll start with KJV. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once diver delivered unto the saints. Okay, okay, that's that makes it clearer. He's uh, we're, we should earnestly contend for the faith that was once spoken to the ones who became the first saints. Okay, uh, trying to preserve it in it, the way it was spoken to them is how we should speak it to others. That's how I'm taking it. All right, beware of evil men, verse 4. For crept in certain men, the ones, I think I'm just going to stick to um, the Blue Letter Bible version. That way we can look up a different, um, I can change this to NASB 95 and we'll just go from there. All right. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed. Those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation or, oh, the footnotes are tiny, 
written about long ago. Hmm. Written about long ago or marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness. That means a right to sin. This is one of those verses to refute people who try to tell you once you're saved, you're always saved. They take the gospel message of Jesus Christ and use it as a license to sin saying, and I don't have to repent because nothing that I do or don't do can add to the sacrifice and shed blood on the cross. They hold to that like so tight. Nothing I do can add to or take away from the sacrifice Jesus made for me on the cross. No amount of sin, no amount of repentance can add to or take away from it. That's basically what they're saying. Even if they don't say those exact words. This says, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. You're denying Him by not saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me, I'm such a sinner. By not repenting. By not doing the good deeds he told us to do. To show our neighbor that we love him. You can say all day long, oh, I love my neighbor as myself. I pray for them every night. Uh, really? Now I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all, that the Lord... After saving a people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. Yep. They ended up dying in the, in the desert. And angels who did not keep their own domain, but abandoned their proper abode, he has kept in eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Verse 7. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they, in the same way as these, indulged in gross immorality and went after strange flesh, are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. Yet in the same way, these men also by dreaming defile the flesh and reject authority and revile angelic majesties. The footnote on angelic is glories. Literally, glories. Instead of angelic majesties, it says, the footnote says glories. Well, we are told to be careful uh, um, when a stranger, be careful when entertaining strangers because you know not when it could be an angel. I'm not sure exactly. It's worded something like that. I'd have to look it up. Jude 1, 9. But Michael the archangel, when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment, or I know King James says accusation, but merely said, the Lord rebuke you. Whew, I may be guilty of saying a lot worse things than that, Satan, but I hate him with a passion. And Jesus knows why. But these men revile the things which they do not understand and the things which they know by instinct, like unreasoning animals. By these things they are destroyed. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, and for pay they have rushed headlong into the air of Balaam, 
and perished in the rebellion of Korah. There's a reason she put this in that newsletter. It's pertinent for today. These are the men who are, who are hidden reefs. And the footnote is, I can't read it. Stains in your love feasts. When they feast with you without fear, caring for themselves, clouds without water. In other words, people that pretend to be godly, but they don't believe in the power thereof of God. Carried along by winds, autumn trees without fruit, doubly dead and uprooted. How, who do you think that's describing now? Who's still going to church? And for why? They don't know what they did. It's the sin of ignorance. Carried along by winds, or you could say by the mainstream media, casting, heaping and heaping fear upon fear till everybody was just so willing and ready to line up and take it. And now they are without fruit, doubly dead and uprooted. Wild waves of the sea, casting up their own shame like foam, wandering stars for whom the black darkness has been reserved forever. Don't fall into this category just because you haven't gotten the toxin doesn't mean you can't end up like this. If you reject the Son of God, He will reject you. If you refuse to forgive people that have hurt you, He doesn't have to forgive you your sins either. Just remember, think, you know, you have to live by the whole gospel. You can't just pick out pieces, uh, bits and pieces. You have to, God knows your heart. It was also about these men that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied saying, Behold, the Lord came with many thousands of his holy ones. Hmm, many thousands. His holy ten thousands is what the footnote says. The Lord came with many ten thousands. Of his holy ones. If he means angels. To execute judgment upon all. And to convict all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds. Which they have done in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So see that paragraph there. That's verse 15 will tell you ungodly people doing ungodly deeds are going to be convicted for their ungodly ways and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Even if they haven't taken the toxin. These are grumblers finding fault following after their own lusts. They speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. This is titled, Keep Yourselves in the Love of God, verse 17. But you, beloved, ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they were saying to you in the last time, there will be mockers following after their own ungodly lusts. These are the ones who cause divisions, worldly-minded, devoid of the Spirit. Yeah. People that claim you're the one causing the division because you're trying to tell them the truth. 
are worldly minded and devoid of the spirit. They want to keep living in the world. They want to have their cake and eat it too and believe they're going to heaven anyway. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. There's that praying in the Spirit again. And this is Jude, Jesus' brother, writing this. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life, and have mercy on some who are doubting. Save others, snatching them out of the fire, and on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. I love that book. It's one of my favorites. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. I pray you each have a blessed evening. That no harm comes to your dwelling. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us. And this video. And all of our devices. And all of our internet connections. And uh, oh, I'm all washed out from the sun. But oh, it's so good to see it. I love it, coming through that window in the west. With that, I'll say bye for now, brothers and sisters. I'll talk to you later.